so we all are marketers out here right who is not a marketer anyone who is not a marketer here one two very few right so uh, having said that we as marketers all love uh, data right we love data and we love and speak data so my my presentation actually starts with data so i have some insights with you so uh, i am going to speak on uh, personalization today and uh, i have got mckinsey data uh, at the table so uh, what it says is uh, personalization what is the importance of personalization per se so uh, as per their survey uh, it says that 76% of the users are more likely to uh, consider purchasing from a brand who is into personalizing uh, stuff right so uh, that is first second uh, pertaining to repurchase almost 78% of the consumers say that they would want to repurchase and lastly uh, recommended uh, wherein 78% of the consumers say that they would recommend a brand if they are personalizing so don't you think that it's the 76% is quite huge or do you guys agree with it anyone do you guys agree with it so right so we all agree with it right personalization is the key uh, for any brand to succeed uh, with customers so just giving a validation over here so we at candor by kalyan jewelers also have embarked upon the personalization journey and we are able to see a 30% upliftment in uh, the overall campaign performances so by 30% i essentially mean the overall increment increment in the revenue so uh, that's validated in our uh, things as well now let's quickly go on to uh, how do we go about crafting this personalization journey right so uh, we are going to start with the basic framework or the basic thing of uh, what are the building blocks of personalization so uh, as per our experience we have seen that there are three c's of personalization which is like supremely important for any business so the three c's are as it is mentioned here uh, customers content and channel now i'll deep dive further into it uh what are what do we mean by customers so uh, any e-commerce website that we have uh users come onto that website and that can be fragmented into different uh, segments right uh one could be the niche segment of buyer who have already purchased with us second could be subscriber maybe a user who has not purchased but done a sign up on your website third is a returning visitor and the last one is users who have come uh, to the website for the very first time so that is the bifurcation of the first c which is customers uh next c is essentially the content so every one of us uh, know about content right there are different types of content that we want to use uh, it can be promotional it can be uh, empathetic it can be various other types so that is essentially content and lastly channel wherein uh, the third c uh, channel uh, wherein we can say it is a website or a app or say other marketing mediums like whatsapp email sms so on and so forth now this doesn't sum it up uh, let me move on to the next part uh which is cro framework now what cro essentially means uh, cro is uh, uh conversion rate optimization and uh, as marketers we all see that there is, there are tons of data available everyone is using google analytics some are using adobe analytics some are using mix panel some are using web engage analytics various other platforms is being used to analyze data but do we really have an answer what kind of data do we need to see probably no uh because we are exposed to so much of data and what we have got to the table here is uh, this is the learning of uh, the things that we have done at candor and basis that we have come up with a formula for cro which we have developed in house uh, what it, it has four levels per se uh, which is ps ap oa and co let me deep dive uh, let me deep dive into it a little more the first thing is ps uh, which says uh, product view to session wherein a session that has uh, that a user that comes on to the website to product view this is the very first part the second part is ap wherein from product view to add to cart the third level is essentially uh, atc to op wherein uh, for us opportunity is equal to user going on to the payment page and finally co wherein after going to the payment page the customer does an uh, end success wherein the conversion happens so these are the four levels so uh, we have break down uh, broken down the entire complex e-commerce journey into four funnel types ps ap oaco the best part about it is if you just multiply all of them ps cross ap cross oa cross co 
that's the conversion rate of the website. And we have been doing this uh, on Google Analytics for quite some time, wherein we see millions of metrics out there. But it's essentially a multiplication of these four uh, levels per se. I have just shown an illustration out there. Consider uh, on the website we have one lakh sessions, we have three and a half lakh product views, we have twenty five thousand uh, ATC, we have ten thousand ops, and at the end we have seven thousand five hundred conversions. So PS becomes three point five, AP becomes seven point one four. OA becomes 40%, CO becomes 75%, and if we just multiply all of them, we get our conversion rate, which is 7.5%. I'm very sure all of us would be looking at conversion rate to some extent, right, uh, in, our, in our businesses. So if we just split that entire business into four levels, and if we form teams in these four levels, our job would be done. We just need to optimize each metric because conversion rate is directly proportional to each of them. So uh, this is what the CRO uh, framework is. Now, uh, you might be wondering what uh, is this about when we are talking about personalization. So, the master plan over here is, we just need to uh, take the CRO framework and the basic building blocks of personalization. And then our master plan would be created for uh, the personalization uh, journey that we want to continue in our uh, businesses. So, let's look at it uh, in, in finer depth. So, the first part is uh, PS. So here we would see that in, in customer we have four types of customer as we just spoke about. In content we have different types of content wherein we, we know about the product affinity of the customer, uh, we know about content affinity of them, we know about key offerings that they are looking for, we also know about predictive content. So basis our past data, we know what customer wants, right? Uh, as, as everyone would have experienced uh, in Amazon. So that is what essentially the content block is. And lastly, channel, as we just spoke about, these are the various channels that we have at our disposal. Now, just imagine if you want to create a personalization journey wherein you would want to take user from, say, a product page to an add to cart, and then from add to cart to an op, from op to conversion. Just use each of the blocks, and then you can craft your personalization journey. For example, you need to uh, create a personalization journey for your buyers. So in customer, you have buyers. In content, you have, say, key offerings. And in channel, say you have on-site. So a mix of all three for PS gives you a personalization strategy for PS as a, uh, as a whole. So here a content play would be done and we'll try to push users from one level to the other. Similarly for all the building blocks and eventually you'll see that a story is being stitched wherein uh, you are taking user from the very first level, that is user coming onto the website to the end conversion and for buyer a repeat conversion. So. Uh, this is what essentially a personalization strategy is. Maybe we can try and get some uh, good questions out here uh, on this slide so that we can we can take it ahead from here. So any questions at the moment on this slide? So uh, that could be two different things, right? So this the, the thing that we are speaking about is essentially on the website, the, the brand website. So how do you personalize over there? Any other questions? Way essentially is, uh, I'll go to the previous slide. OA is essentially ATC to OP, wherein uh, from Act to Card, the user should go to the payment page. So the definition for us for OP is equal to the payment page. Yeah. Uh, any any further questions on that? Uh, OA, as we just spoke about, it's ATC to OP, where wherein user from Add to Cart page to a payment page. So for, uh, payment op opportunity definition for us is equal to the payment page. Moving on to the next part, there are a few examples that I've kept here. So the very first example that you see is essentially an on-site personalization example wherein a user gets a personalized coupon code uh, to move him from the very first journey that is uh, the session to the product view. So this is the very first example of the same. Second is essentially an emailer wherein we are using some product APIs to essentially showcase a personalized product to the customer uh, basis his or her uh, browsing behavior. So that is what is done over here. Uh, on top of that, we have added exclusive discounts only for the customer such that he can move ahead uh, uh, from his journey. 
the third is essentially a mix of uh, a personalized content and a broadcast content and mix it up and then we get a, a curated content for the customer such that we can have really good uh, creatives out there with content and then a personalized content of uh, what he or she has browsed. So, so for example, here we have uh, essentially the journey for chains. So this is the chain which the customer is looking for and these are our best selling chains. So essentially a mix of both of them kind of uh, uh, gives, gives the uh, final look for the customer. And have something called as dynamic uh, kind of a product display, uh, which the customer gets basis his or her uh, browsing behavior. And also on top of that, uh, some predictive analysis basis the past uh, behavior that we have seen on our segment of customers. So uh, this is the personalized content that the customer sees when he or she comes onto the website. So uh, this is what, uh, uh, these are the few examples of personalization that we have adopted at Candair. Lastly, uh, the bigger question would be how do we analyze and optimize this personalization, right? So over here, uh, we have uh, broken down into five steps. So the very first step would be to identify which funnel area actually has a lot of issues, right? So which funnel needs to be worked upon? Is it PS? Is it OP? Is it OA? Is it CO? So we need to uh, fix that first. Second, maybe no, uh, we should note down the existing data that we have for all these ratios. Third would be uh, using the master plan that we just showcased to uh, design the campaign journey and identify what goal are we looking forward to optimize. The next step would be uh, to set up A-B tests. We should not forget to uh, uh, skip the A-B test part because that's the most crucial aspect to understand if personalization is actually working for you. Lastly, once the campaign is set and we kind of deliver it to our customers, uh, how do we look at the data after that? So the steps would be first is uh, A-B test winning outcome. And how do we do that? We can use CTRs to essentially see which uh, creative is actually working well for us. Uh, is it personalized one or the regular one? So that's the first one. Second, uh, we can see if there is an upliftment in the ratios, which is PS, AP, OS, CO to see if that journey is actually working for us and if there is upliftment that we see in that. Uh, third is overall conversion rate as we know the formula of CR. Uh, we can see if there is upliftment out there. And finally, uh, basis the learnings from the first three steps, we should learn and reiterate and uh, craft our next steps. So uh, that is what uh, kind of sums up the uh, overall personalization strategy in the first go. And then uh, basis every brand we need to learn and reiterate how it works for us. So yeah, that's it for uh, uh, the presentation. Thank you guys. Any any questions, please, please feel free to ask. You mentioned about the entire personalization part. Yeah. At the starting of it, do you integrate any cohorting of the user? Do you segregate this between age groups, gender, or how do you start off that company? Yes, yes, definitely. So uh, I'll just go to the back. Uh, Okay, so uh, there are multiple things that we can do. So in the customer, if you see the very first uh, segmentation that we do is we define the customers. Wherein if the customer is a first time customer who has come onto the website, is he a returning visitor? Is he or she is a subscriber? Or is he or she a buyer? This is the first level of segmentation that we do. After that, there are numerous dimensions that we can look at. It can be gender, it can be age, it can be their lifetime value, it can be what uh, product affinity do they have, what channel affinity do they have. There are numerous dimensions that we can uh, we can play. But since this is the first step towards our personalization strategy, uh, we should not complicate it uh, further uh, while we do it, take the first step. And hence, we have kept only uh, the initial level bifurcation over here. But having said that, depending on the uh, data journey that each brand has, they can integrate a lot of other dimensions and craft their cohorts accordingly. Correct. Correct. So we not have a purchase that occurs in a recurring mode, right? It won't mm -hmm. be a monthly or a quarterly purchase, it could be once in a year, once in a half yearly mode. Correct. So how is it that you engage with these consumers while they're not going to be your, uh, you know, 
purchase end customers they're not going to purchase for a longer run how do you look at this strategy uh, that's a good question may i know your name sandhya that's a good question out here uh, so even we uh, had the same perception while i joined candor that people don't purchase jewelry very often right it could be a yearly purchase or a six monthly purchase but what uh, what we saw over here is that people are actually making frequent purchases when it comes to jewelry as well so uh, it entirely depends on the cohort that we are targeting uh, and the kind of designs that we have on our website and amalgamate it with the right kind of content that we have make it more re relevant to the users and then you see uh, conversions coming in so even that was a, a, a change of perception for us while we are working at candor so people do not actually uh, make a yearly or a half yearly purchase they really do it quite often as well yeah Yeah. Right. Uh, chains, rings, earrings, whatever that might be. So, one, uh, you build for a category, you optimize it. How do you first of all define a category for the user that you want to target the user first? Right. And later on, how do you decide on the cross-selling part of it? Sure. Uh, again, a good question. May I know your name? Raj. Uh, Raj, that's a good question. So essentially what we do is, uh, so we have search on our website, right? And we also have uh, Google search as well. So most of our traffic that is coming in uh, is essentially a intended driven, uh, driven traffic which is coming in. So we essentially know what the user wants and basis that the journey starts from there. And once the user has come onto the website, that is where the interaction starts and that is where we get to know what the user is looking for. And basis the interests and touch points that he does on the website, we craft our next steps. So uh, that is where we get to know about the category and the product type which the customer is looking for. And what about the future, like uh, when you go ahead in the lifetime of the right. user, like do you still take signs from the user, optimize or do you still go further deep in the same category? Sure. Uh, again, a good question. There are two things over here. Uh, one is uh, the user tells us his or her intent by doing some interactions on, onto the website. This is one. If the user doesn't do that interactions, uh, we have predictive segments as well, wherein we know after one category, which is the most affined category, which the user is likely to purchase. Just taking an example, when he or she purchases a ring, the next purchase most likely is a necklace or a chain or a earring, uh, which we have seen in our journey. So that is where we start cross-selling, that is where we start upselling. So uh, it's all about the past data that we have, we learn, about, uh, we learn uh, a lot of data over there and then we start uh, recommending it to users. And uh, secondly, on the operational or execution part, so like I've also tried creating strategies, very refined strategies, like this looks, master plan looks very well, right? There are so many cohorts, every cohort has a different plan for it. Correct. How does it actually go to execution or operations? Like when someone has to actually set up campaigns to send them some stuff right. or set it in the app or on the website, there's a lot of thing that goes behind to show something to some users, right? Correct. So I guess uh, over here, the intent has to be like super crisp. The clarity has to be super crisp. If you see the, the reason why we have uh, come up with this uh, entire master plan is because we know where we want to uh, work upon as in which uh, level of my e-commerce journey is troublesome, where I need to work upon and basis that we create our roadmap. So if we know that AP is a journey which is troublesome, we create journeys for AP uh, in, a, in a linear fashion. If we know that after AP, CO is the next journey that we need to look at, that is the roadmap that we create. So essentially, uh, while crafting the plan, we essentially know the problem statement. So if you have a well-crafted problem statement, if you have a lot of clarity, and then if you see the execution becomes really simpler when you have that clarity of thought. So clarity within the yes, right? yes. So maybe as a marketer, if we are deciding something, it's, it's great if you can actually uh, discuss it with your peers and your senior management as well. That is where you can get even larger clarity of how they are looking at the business. So even we didn't have these ratios earlier, uh, but uh, it was the learning curve that we had uh, wherein we streamlined our entire e-commerce journey into four levels. And that is where we started looking at data. Uh, any other questions? Uh, here, hi. Yeah. Uh, what would you say are three or four mistakes that uh, you could avoid when it comes to CRO from personal experience or as a marketer? Uh, great question again. So uh, for CRO, what we can say is uh, CRO is a complex world, right? 
and there is no one team involved so we cannot say that marketing is the only team involved for cro marketing team alone cannot do uh, anything with respect to uh, conversion rate optimization it has to be an amalgamation of all the teams so uh, the number one mistake which which teams does is they work in silos so if we avoid working in silos maybe get all the folks uh, create that small uh, cro team and then you can leverage on insights and work on action plan that would uh, really uh, curb the issue so even in our cro journey we started looking uh, into cro uh, that which is conversion rate optimization by the marketing team but essentially when we integrated all the teams uh, in the entire organization that is where we saw things kicking in and we could do n number of experiments as well so yeah silos working in silos is the biggest mistake that i would say